What's up everyone, my name is Arthur and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the PwC Assurance Academy case. Because the first two tasks are pretty quick, uh, I'll be going through both of them in this video. But right before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that if you're interested in investing in cryptocurrency, uh, I highly encourage you to take a look at my video on CoinSpot. CoinSpot is how I really started learning about crypto and that's actually how I started investing in it also. If you guys are interested, please use the code in the description um, to make an account you'll get $10 worth of Bitcoin for free. I think you may even be able to get those $10 without making a deposit. Uh, but if you do have to make a deposit, you can just deposit $1. If you don't have an Australian bank account or are having some issues with CoinSpot, I'll also drop a link in the description for Binance. Binance is an exchange like CoinSpot, but it also has many different e-learning tools. If you're interested in learning uh, more about crypto, Binance is definitely a very good start. If you're not even interested in investing, just learning about cryptocurrency, I think it's an excellent tool. Uh, and you can also learn a lot about blockchain as well. And with that, let's get started with the PwC case. So the case is basically centered around um, auditing a company, which I believe is a hotel uh, that PwC has been elected to audit. And the first task is essentially, we have to figure out what type of audit are we doing? So as always, um, the, first, the first task is usually pretty quick. So here we have to answer these two questions. We're gonna send an email to Kevin and we have a bunch of extra info uh, that's provided for us here. Sometimes they're pretty overwhelming. You have a lot of information. Um, helpful hint, <laughs> that's probably gonna be useful. Yeah, so try not to get overwhelmed, you know, open them up. Uh, don't feel like you need to use all of it. Often, I, f I found that often you don't need all of the information, especially when it's just the first um, couple questions for these cases. All right, so the basics of the Swiss audit option. So I th this document here is probably going to be the most important. So it outlines, we have three different types of audits that we can do. Um, we have limited audit, ordinary, and no audit. So looking at the limited, it looks like we're going to have to compare some criteria. So we have sales, total assets, employees. Um, there was some info about that below. Okay. All right. So I, I think, okay, that's that's a useful document and let's have a look at, okay, so here we have the balance sheet. It's important that it's in Swiss francs. Uh, yep. So, all right, so we can see that the total assets down the bottom is gonna be useful. It's one of the criterias for a limited audit. So I believe it was, um, was it 20 million? Yeah, 20 million in total assets and 40 million in sales. Okay, so let's have a look at the income statement as well. And that's where we're gonna find the sales. All right, so I think, uh, yeah, you gotta be careful here. Um, it's not net profit. So making sure that it's uh, the bottom line of total revenue, basically it's revenue sales kind of interchangeable unless they're speaking about maybe specific products. So I would take the bottom to those two bottom numbers. So I think, um, yeah, by the looks of it, it's, uh, it looks like it's an ordinary audit. Now this is like, I'm doing this pretty quickly. I would say definitely do a little bit more research and just make sure that that's kind of compl uh, kind of complies with everything else that you find. So drafting the email, you always want to write the first, you want to write the answer that you're looking for in the first line. That's really important. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I will create a kind of an explanation for my, re like all my reasoning for why we're doing an ordinary audit. So I explained it to you guys just then, but now we're going to, um, put it in the email and charts, um, just simple kind of tables, always really useful. So we're going to go client 2018, client 2019, because over those years it can vary. It's important. I think, um, because if you're auditing a, a company, you shouldn't, it should, it's, it's relevant over what number of years 
And here, as I said before, we don't meet the criteria for two of the three. Um, we only meet the criteria for the employees. And these are the numbers that we found. Just as I said, those are the total assets. And uh, the net income number, which is below here. Sorry, not net income, sales number. Make sure we don't get confused with the net profit. And just a quick explanation. All right, there we go. And obviously, you know, you can format it um, and there. <laughs> That's essentially task one done. So moving on to task two, um, it is an ordinary audit. And now we're going to continue on and have a look what they want us to do here. So we want to uh, advise uh, the client. All right. All right. Kevin has some more questions. We need a bit more. So we're gonna, we need to find a little bit of information from our clients. So we're gonna create a slide deck, uh, which I've kind of prepared here. And what I encourage you guys to do is go into the slide master and play around with formatting. Um, Cause I think that's really important that you don't, you're not really taught in school, at least I wasn't. So play around with the slide master, um, try to get, you know, I, I made that PWC design that wasn't kind of a, a given. So um, anyway, Moving on to the questions. The first slide, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, learning more about the client. So what do we wanna know uh, from internal sources? So what are the internal sources and also the external sources? So the first things that come to mind, you know, management, right? CFO, CEO. Then we can kind of keep moving down. Um, any records that we can find of executive meetings, Same thing, um, there should be board of meetings, uh, records of uh, board of directors, again, as in meetings, records of those meetings, any future business plans that have been kind of solidified, any documents on that, um, financing documents uh, and any uh, investing projects and uh, current budgets. Go, oops, fix that. All right, and external sources, um, for me, these are a bit iffy. I'm thinking lenders, other outside investors uh, that probably are not on the board, um, press, industry reports, um, not media, maybe other media, it kind of coincides with press. And finally, website. By, by website, I mean just client's website. Um, that should work. Uh, this list is definitely not exhaustive. There's probably way more that you could do, but those are just, I think the main ones that come to mind. Now, the second question is really, I think we've already really answered it, but um, just for kind of uh, the holistic approach, we're going to answer it as well. So gathering data, what do we mean by this is we can have some meetings with the CEO uh, and management. So we wanna look at the minutes or records of uh, the board meetings, um, various executive and board meetings, look at the internal reports, uh, check out the budget and financing documents, and also any strategy and kind of investing documents that they may have. Now for external sources, uh, we can meet with lenders, we can meet with investors also. Um, Analyze press articles. Um, I guess be careful with that. Make sure it's not an opinion. Always fact check. Uh, collect industry reports and collect data from uh, the client's website. Anything, anything interesting that you find there. All right. So, and that's about it, okay? Um, 
I would leave it like that and just send it through. So the task is only one hour. I definitely wouldn't spend a lot of time on it. Usually if you are in a big company setting, you're probably gonna be working on two or three things at once, if not more. So it's really important that you get the information uh, kind of complete your task and get it out relatively quickly. So that's it for the first two tasks. In my next video, I'll be going through the rest of the PwC uh, Assurance Academy case. Once again, if you guys are interested in learning more about cryptocurrency or potentially starting investing, definitely check out my, the links in the description for Coinspot and Binance. Again, Binance, great resource to start learning about cryptocurrency in general and blockchain. Or if you're interested in learning more about the market and potentially starting to actually invest, definitely use my link in the description for Coinspot. You'll get a free $10 so you can start playing around with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.